Okay. Okay, fly, fly the flag. Everyone fly the flag. Get your flags out. Oh. Get your um get your flags out. You've all got to fly all over the country. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, fly these flags. The Canton up here, that's what holds your rights. Your rights are all in this Canton. Not actually in the flag, but in the Canton. And our ancient rights are all in there. You've got to fly these flags. Now, I've got some very, very bad news today. Okay, so let me just get this sorted out. As we're going to try and um, get this, you know, we, we don't know. We don't know if we can stop it. It's like a train wreck. It's just the train is just going so fast that we don't even know if we're going to be able to stop it. But we've seen the movies, haven't we? We've seen the movies with the train. The train is going right into the wall. I mean, we've seen it, and it's almost right at the wall. And then something has happened. God has stepped in, and it's been saved, hasn't it? So we've got to... Um, We've got to uh, keep going and do our best in the best way. I'm just I'm getting a lot of abuse about who I'm choosing and I'm not choosing anyone. I'm just saying these are the options that we have and I'm just showing you who the people are that are the options to look at and we can um, eliminate them if we feel they're no good. But you can't just come at me all the time and say to me, he's no good, she's no good. We, you're never going to get a person that everybody likes. You have to look at their, uh, them overall. Overall, what have they done that is wrong to the country? What have they done that is right for the country? That's what you've got to look at. You can't be picking on everybody for every little thing. We're never going to get out of this if you all keep fighting. You've got to stop fighting. You've got to choose the leader. You've got to say, right, did he steal anything? Did he, did he cheat anybody? Did he beat anybody up? Did he kill anybody? Did he change our laws? And is he supportive to what our goal is, which is to get God back into Parliament? If they're supportive of that, we, you know, we can we can sort them out later. But what is our goal, New Zealand? Our goal is to get the foreigners out of New Zealand Parliament. They're working against us. I would tell you, they're working against us and they're not working for us. They're working for their own people. And they're using our parliament, our taxes, our army, our police to, to push forward the cause of their own country. That's what they're doing. We've got to take care of our own country. New Zealand, we're in a lot of trouble. Now, I've got some really bad news today. So uh, it's, it's very complicated. I'm a gumboot lawyer. And I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm about as stupid as what anybody is. But I just sift my way through these laws. And if I'm wrong, then I'm quite happy to stand corrected. But I'm just telling you, as a New Zealand person that's reading these laws, this is how I see it. And so you can go and see it any other way that you want to see it. But this is how I see it. And... One of the things that I'm seeing is who are the Trojan horses bringing United Nations, um, hundreds and hundreds of United Nations refugee laws into New Zealand that out, uh, that, 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 that override our own New Zealand rights. And who are the Trojan horses? Now we've seen Chris Farfoy, I, I, I'll do the rant on Chris Farfoy last I think because there's going to be swearing but we've got some Christian friends and a lot of people and they don't like me to swear and so if I start talking about him I'm going to swear so we'll get through this law bit with no swearing and then I'll go to 
my beef with all of these foreigners in our parliament. Now, presently, we have already discovered and we suspect and we can't be sure, but we, well, I, 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 I suspect that Sue Gray knowingly or unknowingly is the Trojan horse to the 1990 New Zealand Bill of Wrongs. We call it the Bill of Wrongs, and that was from another friend of mine that contacts me, and he coined that phrase. I'll just say that, but I don't mention names because I get into trouble. But anyway, the Bill of Wrongs, and then we went and researched it in another video, and we saw that Section 19 binds New Zealand legally in the courts uh, to a, a more than 600 United Nations laws, in, including the United Nations International Charter. Now, these United Nations laws have got hundreds and hundreds of protections for refugees. For You have to be in their group. These are the groups that you have to be in for these protections. I tell you one thing, you can't be a Protestant for a start. So the Protestants, we come under only the 1688. And we've only got about six, uh, about 15 rights that were given to us, especially as a gift from God, from Almighty God. 1990 Bill of Rights is for the, um, the Israelites, it's for the Catholics, it's for the um, is Islamic people, it's for the Mormons, it's for all of those ones. And it's got hundreds of laws that override our tiny little 15 laws. Now, here's the funny thing. Chris Farfoy has been, he was on the Terrorism Act. And when I went and read his name on it, and that has got about three pages of United Nations laws. And in that law, through him, it basically says that if the country, the, the flag state, which is our country, doesn't follow all of their human rights laws that they've got, then the country can expect to be bombed, have um, uh, civil unrest, and I see it as a threat. As far as I'm concerned, it's a veiled threat. Now, he was involved with our, um, our terrorism act, okay, and now he's turned up and he's presented a bill to Parliament that is going to actually bypass Parliament, to my understanding, and it's going to go directly to the Privileges Committee where they're going to debate on it and fast track it. And you know who's in charge of that? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. She's in charge of it. And so Chris Farfoy who's a, a, I mean, he reckons, we don't know his birth, but he's a Tongan. And we've got an Iranian over here on the um, Privileges Committee. And then Chris Farfoy's put it through, and then she's going to decide if it's to go through or not. Now, Section 19 of the 1990 Bill of Rights has got the um, more than 600 refugee laws that we will be bound to. Um, tied up in it, right? And the reason why I said to you that the Bill of Wrongs is no good to you is because section, I'm not going to read it to you, but you can go and look yourself, but section four, five, and six says if any act that Parliament makes is inconsistent with that Bill of Rights, then the judge can't overrule the act of Parliament based on solely on the violation of the Bill of Rights. So it is basically a useless document. And so what you were supposed to do is you were supposed to, if then they had an argument about it. You're going to see how sneaky this is in a minute. They had an argument about it and everybody said, well, the Bill of Wrongs is no good because it can be overridden um, of, for a special circumstance. And so... They said, okay, we're going to debate about this. And they decided that the judge could send it to the Attorney General and the Attorney General could then take it to Parliament and then Parliament could debate the inconsistency and then the Parliament would um, go back to the Attorney General, the minister that made, made the act that was inconsistent, he would go back to the 
Attorney General, Attorney General, and then the Attorney General will go back to the um, the judge. So it would be a hell of a ride for you anyway if any of your rights were violated. You would have to go through that whole process. It would probably take you, um, oh, it would probably take you about um, um, two years, I suppose. It would take a very long time and it would cost a lot of money. And the 1688 Bill of Rights that I'm telling everybody can't be overridden, but Chris Farfoy has done quite a sneaky thing because then you know that it's got a whole bunch of kind of rights and then Section 19 is bound to more than 600 rights for refugees from the United Nations. Only You only need that. And that binds to the Human Rights Act, which binds to the UN. I've done a video on that. Well, Chris Farfoy decided to put this bill forward called the Declarations of Inconsistency. And you might think to yourself, well, that's a very good declaration of inconsistency because they're going to fix this section four, five, and six. And they're going to say to them, well, if, you're, if your act is inconsistent with our rights, then you can't have it. That's what most countries do. But no. Chris Farfoy has removed the, to my understanding, to my limited understanding, he has removed the requirement to go through the Attorney General. So the judge, from my understanding, um, will, the judge will just send it to the responsible minister directly. So if a minister makes an act and it's inconsistent with the Bill of Wrongs 1990, then the judge will contact the minister that made the act. And that minister will decide by himself if it's wrong or not. And then he will file a report to parliament. So they've bypassed the attorney, gen attorney general completely, which is a very bad thing. And then, not only that, from my, you have to listen because it's quite hard to understand. And then he said, so that will be, so no Attorney General and just only go to the responsible minister. And then the responsible minister will make a report and send it back to the judge. So there's no attorney general, which means no governor general and none of that stuff. And then it says it will, um, it should, uh, it's going to be amended for section 92J of the Human Rights Act. So then you've got to go into 92J and 92J of the Human Rights Act says if it is in breach of Part 1A, and then you've got to go to look at Part 1A in the 1990 Bill of Wrongs. When you go to look at Part 1A of the 1990 Bill of Wrongs, it says that the declaration, it refers to subsection two, the declaration may be, that may be granted by the tribunal if subsection one applies, is a declaration that the enactment that is the subject of the finding is inconsistent with the rights to freedom from discrimination in section 19. So what it says is, if there are any um, laws made uh, for, I don't know how many how many rights there are in the New Zealand Bill of 1990, but if there are any laws made that are inconsistent with it, then it's got to go back to the minister and through a whole process. But if there are any laws made against Section 19 refugee rights, then that is against... The, the, um, they're not allowed to make any, basically they're not allowed to make any acts that will affect 
section 19 in any way at all. And then, so they're allowed to make acts that override any one of our rights, but they're not allowed to make any act that will override any of the refugees' rights. So just suck that up for a minute if you can understand what I'm saying. And then section 1A is actually a really tough thing for me to explain. Where's section 1A? Find it. I print it. Sometimes I can't find this crap. Oh, here it is. But section 1A is also difficult also because section 1A says that this bill only applies to, listen to who it applies to, the legislative, the executive, the judicial branches of the government of New Zealand. It applies to any person or body in any public function, power, duty, or imposed on that person or body or pursuant to law. So basically, if any government official does anything against your rights, that's okay. But if they go near that, 19, that section 19 refugee rights, that is highly illegal and they will most likely, might have, I don't know what the remedy is going to be, but they would probably lose their job. But the worst piece is, is that no legislative, no executive, no judicial branches of the government of New Zealand can make any act that does not uphold section 19 which holds all of the more than 600 united nations laws for refugees that they have placed into new zealand courts through the trojan horse of people like sue gray knowingly or unknowingly what it basically means is if this bill is passed that you no longer have power in your country, in my opinion. This is a very, very serious, if you're a lawyer out there, if there's any lawyers out there listening to me and you've got kids, you just have to find a way. You're all gonna be affected with this, you think you're not. Once this bill passes by Golritz Garaman, the New Zealand government will no longer have any power over any United Nations laws that have been inserted into their judicial system, in my understanding. All right? So now that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to be talking a bit about Chris Farfoy and his background. And if you're a... Um, if you're a... Um, a nice Christian and you don't like, you know, my nasty mouth, then now's a good time to leave. So I'm going to be talking about how I want to know, I just want to know how Chris Farfoy, now Chris Farfoy may have been born to New Zealand, but he was raised in a Tongan family. He reckons he can't speak the language, but I quite frankly, I don't believe him. And but that's not the issue. He knows nothing about New Zealand history. And the law in, in 1993, 19, 1996, they changed the electoral law to allow foreigners in our parliament under special circumstance. And I'm calling out Chris Barfoy today and exposing you. What is your special circumstance for being in New Zealand parliament changing all of our laws so that New Zealand no longer has any power whatsoever over its own government. I'm calling you out, Chris Barr, for you fucking, not going to say cunt, but I really want to say it, but you are a fucker. 
we have fucking done nothing but treat your people like fucking diamonds. We have sent millions upon millions upon millions to your fucking countries in, in food aid, in cyclone fucking aid, in all the aid that you fucking want. We have sent it year after year. We've let your fucking people, including yourself, Come into our fucking country, sit in our fucking parliament. We've fucking given you jobs, we've given you houses when our own fucking people are sleeping in the fucking cars. We have done nothing but show kindness to you assholes. And you come into our country and you make fucking deals behind our fucking back to take the power away from our people. And you fucking write dozens of points. And you know what? I reckon it's you. I don't know. And I ain't accusing you, Gold Rips, but you're the fucking lawyer in there, aren't you? You're the lawyer. And let me tell you something. You're a smart little cookie and you know your fucking laws. laws. And I know you do. And who's the lawyer in the Privileges Committee going to be accepting this bill that's bypassing fucking Parliament Nothing but kindness that we've shown you. Nothing. And this is the way you fucking treat our country. You know, I could just, just spit on you. Just fucking spit on all of you. You're nothing more than the fucking dirt under my fucking feet. You bastards. You fucking heathen, traitorous bastards that come into our country and change all our laws and take away all our rights from us while at the same time you're fucking inserting all your rights into law that can't ever be changed while you fucking take out our laws. So I've got no proof that you've got anything to do with this goal, Rex, but I just know that you're a fucking savvy lawyer and you're one of probably the most savvy lawyers I'm spitting because I'm so fucking angry. Now, Chris Farfoy. So, I'm not sorry. Chris Farfoy, getting back to you, and the Mexican. It's 1993, they changed the electoral laws to allow foreigners into our parliament. Uh, Section 55, A, B, and C forbid foreigners that were not of New Zealand birth to New Zealand parents to be in our parliament. Now, this law stands in every single country in the entire world except for New Zealand. Because they changed it. They changed it. And they're, they're all in our parliament now. And it says in that law, under special circumstance. I would like to know what was Chris Farfoy's special circumstance. Special circumstance means that they have to have an exceptionally special skill, such as in finance, such as a very high up surgeon, something like that that we don't have a New Zealander that can do the job. So here's Chris Farfoy's fucking qualification to be changing all the laws of ours in New Zealand and fucking putting forward these bills. I'm telling you, they're fucking grouped up. The foreigners have grouped up and they're against you, you New Zealand, our New Zealand Maori peons. I'm, you think they're with you, but they're not. They're working against you. And when this bill passes... Um, you basically have lost all power. But Chris Farfoy, let's have a look at his qualifications. Since 2017, Chris Farfoy, who, as far as I can see, didn't even go to university. Now, you can go and change that if you want, and I definitely stand to be corrected. As far as I know, he didn't even go to university. Chris Barfoy has been, since 2017, the Minister of Defence, the Minister of Im Immigration, the Minister of Commerce, the Minister of Customs, the Minister of Broadcasting, the Minister of Digital Services, the Minister of Public Housing, and the Minister of Immigration. That another Im he, he went full circle and then back to immigration. And whenever he leaves these positions, do you know who he puts in its place? Islanders. He puts all islanders in this, these positions. All our top positions are not held 
by New Zealand people. They're held by foreigners. So we're at war, New Zealand. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You just have to close your ears to what everybody else is doing and look at what's going on. And we are at war in our very own country, Maori Pians. Now we've got to stop all this squabbling and we've got to say, we don't like him because he's got rich money. We don't like him because he's rallying up or we don't like him because he scratched his ass on the subway one day. We, you know, we, we're not going to find the perfect people, but we fucking, what you've got to think, what they're doing we have no longer, we have lost power in our country. Now, Alpito William CO, who is tantamount to a Samoan chief in the high, very high up in the Mormon church, along with um, she who we shall not name, who says that she's not, but we, we don't know because they all lie so much. He's been in our parliament for years and under the original law, he would not ever have been allowed in our parliament. And what's his qualification? He has set up a whole ministry. So we've got, we've got Chris Farfoy managing all the Maori peons and all of us and all of our laws and everything that, that there. And then... He manages all of the Pacifica people. So he's been the Minister of Minister of Pacific People, Minister of the Courts, Minister of Justice, Minister of Foreign Affairs. When we send our Minister of Foreign Affairs overseas to meet with people, they're not sending our New Zealand Maori Winston Peters that everybody's hating on. They're sending him. You know, push comes to shove. If I had to choose but between Winston Peters going to meet the foreigners as a New Zealand representative or Alpito William Seo, the Samoan King, I'd be choosing Winston Peters and I don't even care what Winston's fucking done in New Zealand. I would still would rather have him over this guy here. I would. I wouldn't even care as long as they were born to New Zealand. He's been the Minister of Education, Minister of Health, and I don't see that he went to university either. So what is their qualifications that they're being given all of these top positions? I mean, look at their positions. Defence, Immigration, Customs, Housing, Court, justice foreign affairs why you know what's wrong with you new zealand that you think that you should have foreigners in these positions these positions are for our new zealand people and there are many new zealand people that haven't finished university and they all thought that they couldn't work in parliament because they hadn't been to university well i'm here to tell you they don't care if you've got the brains of a fucking sheep or a toothpick. You should be allowed to get a job in New Zealand Parliament. If they can get a, new, a job in there with, with their no qualifications, the Mexican got a job in New Zealand Parliament and he was selling popcorn at the movie theatre. Dropped out, never went to university. And he's in our New Zealand Parliament. So all you New Zealand people, you lovely New Zealand people that thought that, because you didn't have a degree or you didn't have high qualifications that you couldn't be in parliament you know what you might as well you could be you could be the street cleaner and go and get a job in there they don't even care but you know what they tend to be doing is putting in anyone that is not a new zealander the new zealanders have to be qualified but all these foreigners they don't have to be qualified so i'm going to be going now and um uh, the law that we have to watch is the bill being put forward by Chris Farfoy. And um, now where is it? Sometimes I get a bit confused. Can't expect me to remember everything here. When did this come in? Okay, so they're fast-tracking this bill. It went for the first reading. 
It was introduced on March 18. It got its first reading on May 27. So March, April, May, two months. March, April, May. Yet yeah, two months and it already has passed its first reading. And then it's going to go, the submission is to be in August, which that's already passed. The reports will be in September. And it's about to be going to its third reading. It's going directly to the privileges and privileges is the word. And so what you've all got to be protesting now, forget about all this COVID stuff. You've got to be protesting to get that 1990 Bill of Wrongs, which is against your 1688 Bill of Rights. You've got to get it out. Those rights are not for you. They're for everybody else but you. So you must get down there and protest this immediately. And I did say to you, look to the north. A man will come with the treaty and the Bible, meaning the 1688 Bill of Rights, in his hands. He will come, but I'm telling you, you need to get the 1688 Bill of Rights printed. You need to get your original English treaty printed. You need to get your New Zealand flag that the Canton holds them, and you need to get down to that parliament and stop. Chris Barfoy's bill from being passed until the New Zealand people, we're not saying it isn't going to be passed, we're saying we want to take, as a people, we want to take some time to think about this. And you've all got to get down there. I don't freaking care if you're Maori, I don't care. If you, you know, if you're a person that has a Pacific Island descent, all right, but you're born to New Zealand, mate, now's the time. You've got to choose your allegiance. You've either got your allegiance in the islands or you've got your allegiance to New Zealand. If you haven't got your new allegiance to New Zealand, this is our fight and you just need to stay out of it. It's our fight. But if you've got your allegiance to New Zealand and you uphold our majesty and you uphold our 1688 Bill of Rights and you uphold our treaty, then by all means, come along and fight with us. But if you're going to be flying those foreign flags all over the place, you can just fuck off all of you because we're done. We're going to be fighting. We're fighting. Get your marching boots out. See you later.